Hi everybody, it's Adam from Lucid Pixel, and today I want to talk about the skills and qualities you need to have to improve very quickly and improve well. Find great results in a short period of time. And what actually inspired this talk is a recent interview by my friend Tyler Edlin on his Brush Sauce Theater uh, channel with my former student, one of my first of all time students, uh, students Antonio Stepertz from Belgium. Uh, of course, you can go and check the link in the description below. All the information is going to be there. In this interview, Tyler Edlin picks apart Antonio's brain, trying to figure out what kind of clockwork goes on in this guy's head for him to be able have been able to achieve everything he did in such a short period of time. He went from being a zero artist to being a professional in not much longer than a year. And that's quite an accomplishment, a very remarkable accomplishment. However, ha having been his teacher and continuing to be his friend to this day, it comes as no surprise to me. In fact, I knew that he was going to achieve what he did within a week to two weeks of knowing him, of teaching him, because of the qualities that he possessed personally and professionally. So what were those qualities? Well, a lot of people think you have to have superior DNA, you have to be more focused, you have to be more, you have to be more, you have to have better resources or better support. None of that. Every quality that you need to have is something that exists within you. It's not outside of you. And none of it costs you a penny. None of it does. So what I want to share with you are the actual qualities that Antonio has and the qualities that I see every successful and successful in a timely manner type people and what the qualities they have that you need to have in order to achieve exactly the same thing. And you can do that starting right now. All right. This isn't something. This isn't something you have to practice. This isn't something you have to earn over time. This is. These are qualities you can possess right now that are going to immediately send your learning curve skyrocketing and your career skyrocketing on top of it. Number one most important quality he had. When I sat down with him and spoke to him and taught him things and went over his work with him, I could see that he was completely and utterly submissive to learning. No interruption unless he was trying to know what I was saying and understand what I was saying better. He was laser focused on every single fucking word I said. And I mean that. When he sat down, he went, uh-huh, okay, yeah, okay, well, what about that? What, what is this bone? What, what does this bump do here? And what about that muscle? And how about this? And the brachioradial, where does the muscle end? And, you know, all these different things. He was picking apart my brain. He was trying to corner me with questions all the time. Luckily, I know my shit well enough, but when he did corner me, I would stop, I would look it up, and we'd find out together. I learned a thousand things in classes with him because he was constantly, constantly pushing my knowledge. He was pushing my ability to teach to its limits. I loved it. It was so stimulating. Furthermore, I could tell he really, really, really understood the value of what I had to teach him. He knew, hey, Adam's been doing this for over 20 years. He's learned through trial and error. He knows his stuff. Pay close attention. So the number one lesson was was listening a uh, being a good listener and getting your pride out of the fucking way one of the telltale signs of somebody who a lacks confidence b is a shitty learner c who's going nowhere or if they do they're gonna go they're gonna go somewhere very slowly or people go yeah yeah i already know that that to me is okay you're going nowhere if you're gonna say yeah yeah i already know that I know that basically that's your brain's way of saying, I already put 15 minutes of work into it. I don't need to, you to repeat this again. If I'm teaching you something, it's because I'm looking at your artwork and I know it's lacking. So pay attention. I'm here to help. Listen, right? Anthony Jones is a great example. One of my students had taken his mentorship prior to mine. And he said, one of the students had turned to him in this class and asked Anthony directly, he said, what are some of the qualities of, what is the, the biggest, the most common quality of your best students? And he said, they actually listen to what I'm saying. And everybody laughed and he said, no, I'm actually serious. They actually listen because two thirds of people have a hard time listening. And it's true. Be a better listener. You're going to get better at art like that. I guarantee it. Number two, the week after our first lesson, I gave him every bit of information I possibly could. I really, really exhausted myself teaching him. By the time we got to the next week, what blew me out of the water was he literally physically applied every single damn thing I taught him. I could tell he spent every moment he had 
applying every bit of knowledge I taught him. And that's one of the most important things you need to do artistically. I remember a, a, a post that um, uh, Chris Oatley had put on his Facebook page, one that I've probably quoted in the past, and he said, if you subscribe to a fitness magazine and read a full mag fitness magazine every single day for th an entire 365 days for a full year straight, but you never go to the gym, are you going to get any, are you going to be in better shape? And the answer is, uh, of course not, duh. You actually have to physically get up and do it. We do this in art all the time. You probably do this all the time too. You channel surf. Ahmed al Duri, Anthony Jones, Tyler Edlin, Chris Oatley, Noah Bradley, Matt Kaur, Marco Bucci, Adam Duff, whatever. You're, you're freaking all over the place checking out all these tutorials, watching painting demos, listening to people teach. You know, China Digital, another one. You go and you check out all of these different all these different channels and you listen, 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 all day, all this freaking theory, you know, while you're eating your haagen dazs and then you go, woo, that was a good learning session, now let's go and play some more Zelda, right? You might as well have not watched anything at all, you're wasting your time, because unless you physically apply it, you have to realize that art is equal parts academic, learning, intellectual, cerebral, and 50% physical. If you don't physically apply what you've learned, you might as well have not learned anything else. It's just it's just knowledge floating around in the air. It's like learning a language. You can learn it in your head, read the words, but as soon, you have to teach your mouth. You need to create that mind to mouth connection. The first when I first started learning Spanish, I could read the book and translate words in written form as much as I wanted, but as soon as I sat down with my friend, my Mexican friend, okay, today we're going to speak Spanish together. Okay? And he goes, okay, cool. And we started speaking Spanish. I went to open my mouth and I went, I literally physically gagged because I didn't know how to speak it yet. Art is the same thing. You have to physically do it. So instead of going and surfing these 200 channels, just watch one good lesson. Anybody, go and check out just one lesson where they actually teach you something. It's not just a demo, right? Then spend the rest of the day applying it. And if you kind of lose yourself a little bit, go back and watch it again. Go and buy, spend five bucks and go buy one of Anthony Jones's Gumroads. It's five bucks. But then apply it. Practice it all day. Practice it all week if you want to. But just one thing. You are going to grow fast because you're actually applying this to your DNA. You're applying it to your memory. And once you apply that, then it becomes a part of your toolkit and you can reuse it later. But if you just listen and don't actually pay and don't actually do anything with it, stop wasting your time. Number three. Honesty. This is a big one, okay? We all have mommies and daddies that love us, some more than others, all right? <laughs> some parents aren't very loving, some parents are very loving, overly loving. An overly or an underly loving parent, or teacher for that matter, can be equally damaging to your artistic growth. What do I mean? Well, you can have parents that don't give a fuck, they're not contributing anything. Or you can have parents that give too much of a fuck and they're oversensitive to your well-being. And Chris Oatley said this himself in one of his podcasts. He says, one of the people, one of the types of people you should definitely not listen to when you want to grow artistically is your mommy and daddy. Because they love you too much, to be honest with you. In most part, right? When I see my kids draw, if I see my five-year-old or my, my four-year-old or my seven-year-old draw, I'm not going to say, eh, you need to work on your anatomy, you're a little bit weak. You're never going to succeed professionally if you keep doing this garbage you, know, you keep pumping out the swill. <laughs> of course, at that age, it's kind of counterproductive because, you know, they don't have professional ambition at that point. But with my 15-year-old, I'm honest with her because she's taking it seriously because she's actually pushing her artwork to a point where, fuck, you know, she's going to be drawing circles around me any day now. But not yet. I am a professional. I do have 20 years of experience behind me. So when I sit down and I look at her artwork, I'm not going to say, ooh, that's perfect. And later on in life, when, she's actually starts, when she actually has an education, whatever she does, be it a computer programmer or an artist, if she says, why didn't they call me back for an interview? I'm not going to say, because they're douches. No, I'm going to say probably because, you, because your drawings aren't strong enough or because your style isn't the right kind of style or because your portfolio is weak, your presentation is weak. Or maybe because your writing skills suck. You're not being sociable. You're not presenting yourself socially in your emails well enough. Maybe your email is stupid. I'm going to be honest with you. From somebody who knows what actually makes a difference. And I'm not going to band-aid your boo-boos as a teacher or as a parent at that point. I'm going to say it like it is. I'm going to be honest. 
You have to be honest with yourself too. That's a professional technique you have to learn. You have to be non-abusively honest. When I sat down with Antonio, he'd sit down and he goes, yeah, this is weak, that's weak, this is doing better. I think maybe we should, if you don't mind focusing more on that, I'm going, yeah, you're right. Let's focus more on this because this definitely needs, this is okay, but this is kind of lagging behind. Let's focus on that. And every, it was like, boop, 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 boop. he grew like this. Everything was growing at the same time in tandem and he grew. And every time he, if he, if he, if he was amazing at all these different things, but his hands sucked, he would spend all week drawing hands. You know what I mean? I mean, how can you not get somewhere that way? He has, every time there's a weakness, he doesn't abuse himself with it and go, I suck, I'm no good. No, he says, learn it. And then he, he, then he, he listens and then he applies in that order. However, remember when our conversation started, he opened up our first ever session, the first 15 minutes of our first private session together, back, you know, back in late 2015. He said to me, and I'll, for the sake of argument, I'll make him a Latino, even though he's from Belgium. Adam, I just met art, but I love it. I love art. I love it. I don't know why, but I love it. Okay? And I said, hmm, his heart's in the right place. He expressed passion and love for what he did, which is, without that, Everything I've said before is a complete waste of time. And I've spoken about passion. I've spoken about knowing where you, what you believe in and knowing what you love and knowing where you're going. But let me paint a picture of it so that, so that you truly understand what I mean by passion. When you love something, it's biological. When you don't love something, it's also biological. You cannot force yourself to unlove somebody you do. You can imagine you fall in love. You, you might even have experienced this in your life, maybe more than once. You completely fall head over heels with somebody and they love you back just as much. And then they break your heart. They cheat on you. They leave you high and dry. Do you fall out of love with them? No, you still love them. <laughs> Maybe they're bad for you. Maybe you shouldn't be subjecting yourself to the abuse of betrayal and dishonesty, but you still love them, right? You can't turn that off. Well, the same thing applies to, same thing applies to not loving somebody. They could be so good to you and they go out, they'll, they'll drive 5,000 miles just to you know be there at three o'clock in the morning to, to be, because you need a shoulder to cry on or just for some company or but yeah, chemistry's not there right what can I do well can you make yourself love them well sometimes you can learn to love you can learn to love but 90% of the time no 99% of the time no so you can't turn love off when it exists you can't turn it on when it doesn't and the same thing applies to your artistic career. Yeah, give yourself a chance. I've had art talks about that in the past. Commit yourself for now. If you love it, keep it going. If you don't, at least you've given yourself a good shot. You, you know that the honest truth, you can make an informed decision at that point, right? But if you're sitting there, and I've dealt with this with students many times where we sit down and they go, you know, they, they submit their assignment. And it's like, it's very lackluster. I'm sitting there going, wow, this is really very uninteresting work. Like it's very uninspired work, I can see. Yeah, I know, it's just been a rough week, you know, and Zelda, and, you know, and tough times, and my girlfriend and Zelda, you know, and blah, 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 and Zelda. You know, I'm sitting there going, but do you love this? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I'm just like, well, you're not convincing me. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not sold. You know, oh, yeah, I do. My answer to that was one of two things, and it's very clear. Either A, this style of art is not your bag. Let's try something else. Or B, maybe you don't love art. Maybe, you, maybe you'd be more interested in doing 3D or maybe you'd be more interested in doing animation. Or, But this isn't tickling your fancy and we've been doing this for a month already. So let's start talking about that instead. And then, you know, you go and you talk about the other thing and their eyes just go, Wing! you know, oh, yes, yeah, blah, blah, yeah. And they come back the next week and they've done like 600 drawings. Well, proof is in the pudding. Without the passion, everything else I said is obsolete. It's never, you're never going to actually get the drive and ambitious ambition to do any of the others. So let's recap the session I had with Antonio and the session I've had with every single student that are now working professionally and are pumping out portfolios and art, pieces of artwork on a daily basis. Okay. Number one, they love it first and foremost. Number two, they love it so much that they'll listen to it even if it makes their ears bleed 
because every bit of knowledge they can get is worth its weight in gold to them. Number three, they apply what they've learned. They apply it verbatim, religiously. They even go beyond where they come back the next week and go, you remember what you taught me? Well, what about this, this, and that? And they end up teaching the teacher. Happens to me all the time. And number four, they're honest about it. When they have a strength, they recognize it, but they recognize there's space to grow for growth. But they also recognize their, they recognize their weaknesses and they don't pussyfoot around it. It's just professional decorum. It's professional habit of just being honest. This is weak, improve it, point final. And when you improve it, there you go. You move forward and you, and you develop more of an affection for it because it becomes more and more part of your life. So you follow that criteria and I guarantee you, despite your resources or your geographical location or your focus or how fucking amazing Breath of the Wild is, okay, it, nothing can pull you away from it. It's something that you'll have to do at least a little bit every single day. Otherwise, you start going through withdrawals. So hopefully you enjoyed this art talk as usual. If you like it, of course, if you want to, I do art talks regularly, so don't forget to subscribe and leave a little thumbs up. You know how YouTubers do that. So I always say that shit at the end of every video. There's also the Brush Sauce Theater Art Contest where you can, where it's a free contest, exposure, free critique of your artwork by myself and Tyler Edlin usually on Tyler Edlin's channel first and foremost. So go and check that out. And if you're interested in my uh, mentorship, Lucid Pixel, take note that I'm fully booked for the next few months. But if you want to reserve your spot for a few months down the line, then you can get all the information down below or you can go to my website. Just check the description, all the info is there for you. All right, so hopefully you enjoyed my art talk. Take care and happy painting. Bye-bye.